published, which is called A Thousand Bayonets. In the novel, a former war correspondent named John Webster maneuvers through the seedy underworld of Vancouver, trying to bring a vicious drug lord to justice. A Thousand Bayonets won the Editor's Choice Award from Author Solutions. In uh, 2008, Joel went to British Columbia Institute of Technology for a public relations degree. And after doing various jobs in the PR field, Joel wrote and produced Neutral Territory, a film about Henry Huge, uh, who must return to his crazy Swiss family after falling into money troubles. Uh, Neutral Territory was nominated for a Maverick Award for Best Cinematography and Best Picture at the Valoid Film Festival. It won Best Feature at the Interobang Film Festival. It, all, uh, it is also an official selection of the Beijing International Film Festival and the New York International Film Festival. Uh, Joel was nominated for Best Screenplay for Neutral Territory in the World Music and Independent Film Festival. And uh, as well, Joel is currently writing a screenplay called Shots, a coming of age story about Carter, a teenager who gets his first job at a coffee shop. He's also working on a sequel to his novel called Shoot the Devil, which yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Dan. Appreciate the introduction. So I'm going to be talking about why you want to write a book and what the benefits of those are today. So Dan did um, a pretty good introduction about me, um, but just a little bit more about myself and why do you want to listen to me specifically. So, so I um, I started this marketing company called Kipling Media. Uh, we started off uh, doing just websites. Um, I was primarily the content guy, so I would write the front end content. While my partner at the time, he would do all the program and back end uh, stuff, all the complicated stuff that I didn't uh, know how to do. We've grown uh, Kipling Media, now we have three departments. We have a website department, we have advertising, which primarily focuses on uh, social media, SEO, um, at, like radio ads, print ads, and then we also have a film production side. Uh, so today we're filming a uh, commercial Lynn Valley Care Center. Uh, uh, we've grown to a team of six. Um, each have their different roles. My primary role is still like the content, uh, the SEO side of things. So I've written six fiction books, one non-fiction book. I've uh, ghostwritten uh, countless books. Um, as Dan alluded to today, um, so my fiction books are primarily about a journalist it's a thriller, action, adventure stories. He gets into all sorts of trouble. He uh, uncovers mysteries, solves them. Um, they're kind of like a Jack Reacher um, kind of style book, where it's like a very lone wolf hero. Um, I've got a, cop a couple copies of my book on uh, copywriting today, which um, is yeah, just about how to make a living writing. Uh, it's primarily to help struggling writers who really enjoy the craft of writing, but don't kind of understand the whole marketing side, which I have developed through my marketing company. Uh, also, film producer wrote a screenplay called uh, Neutral Territory. Um, it won, I think, something like 15 awards around the world, was in 30 film festivals. Um, this is uh, the debut at the Rio Theater. But I have to say the coolest moment of my life probably was when it was uh, showcased at the New York Times Film Festival. So they had they set up these big bleachers at New York Times Square. Uh, beautiful, you know, beautiful day summer, uh, New York Times uh, Square. And so we, they broadcasted the movie. Uh, you know, like thousands of people are going through Times Square. You know, a lot of people just sitting and watching the movie. Super cool experience. Um, and just like something that I would have never yeah. thought was possible. What okay. was it about, Joel? What was it about? So, so the, the um, movie is a, is a coming to age drama of, uh, of a boy who becomes a lawyer. He goes away from his small town roots 
uh, kind of comes this big city slicker guy. Uh, his father gets sick, and he has to go back to the small town and kind of reconnect with his father, who is ultimately dying. Um, so why should you write a book? I get this, uh, you know, being a writer myself, I get this question probably about three or four times a week. Uh, you know, people call me, oh, I've got this great idea for a book. You know, I want to write a children's story. I want to write uh, a book to help mothers, you know. Um, I got, there's so many ideas. But the first question I always ask them is, what is the purpose behind your book? Um, many people know this TED Talk very famous is start with why and I always encourage people to think of how like what what's like the main motivation behind writing your book and so I've kind of broken this there's so many but I've broken it down to basically three different reasons why so first is legacy you want to pass on something to your children or to your community Right? Maybe you've had an interesting life or an interesting story that you want to communicate to, to your friends, family, community, or the world at large. So I've helped you know, probably about three or four people uh, kind of tell their legacy story. One was a, like one of a really fascinating story of a Holocaust survivor who uh, was from Hungary. And he moved, he escaped. Um, the Holocaust, he um, lived through the Hungarian Revolution, he moved to the, the United States, he uh, joined NASA, he became part of the space program there. It was like super fascinating story, and it was really, it was such a privilege to be a part of that and to help him tell that story. So, that, and I also, my, um, my great uncle as well, he, um, he was part of the RAF during the Second World War, and so he, has such, again, such amazing story. And I think these stories are really important for us as a community to remember. And so I think it's, it's really important that you tell these stories and that they're written down and they can be passed on. So second is meaning, meaning, meaning a business goal. <coughs> Perhaps you want to be seen as an authority on your particular field. Perhaps you want more speaking engagements. A book is a great way to become an authority on a particular tough topic and to um, you know kind of leverage that authority to get more business, to become a speaker, um, you know, to pass on ideas, that sort of thing. Uh, the third I would say is spread a message. I put um, Care Bears up here, because that was kind of, as a child, that was sort of like what I associated with, with Care. It was a TV show, I think, in the 1980s, and it taught kids about sharing is caring and all that. But I really think this is important. This, I, I um, categorize this also as like self-help books, but you know, like as a week book. This is a great way to uh, spread a message uh, you know, like what you guys are all about, what what you want to communicate to the world. You know, we can talk about world peace, we can talk about world hunger, right? These are some of the things that could be communicated in a, in a book and to be able to be passed to a broader audience, right? All right, second step, create a marketing plan. So this is where I differ from a lot of different uh, other authors. And I know before you say anything, this is not my marketing background uh, stepping over as in my author side. This is actually a really good um, way to kind of take a step back and to think about again why you're writing this book and how are you gonna communicate that. So I would really, what I do, is just take out a calendar like this one and, and plan out what marketing materials you're gonna use. And I know this kind of sounds a little bit salesy, but it's good because it allows you to communicate to your audience earlier. It allows you to um, also hold yourself accountable when you, um, 
don't want to write, when you, when you think that the process is hard, when you've communicated to people on social media, to your friends and family, hey, I'm writing this book, it kind of forces you to actually do the work, right? Um, so I would take out a calendar, write down kind of what you want to post on social media, what sort of uh, communication you want to tell people. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can just be, you know, picture of your writing uh, desk or something, or like what you've done that day, right? I wouldn't over, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't overcomplicate the whole marketing process on your book. But I think it's important, even if it's not for a like. If it's not to become a best-selling author, I think it's still very important to have a marketing calendar because it allows your book to become more successful and it allows you to communicate your message further. Okay, so there's, again, many ways you can market your book. Uh, I picked three. Uh, through social media, obviously, is very popular and I would uh, very encourage you highly to use it, uh, use you know all the usual channels: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, use what is most natural to you. So don't use a social media platform that you don't like, basically, because you're not going to follow through with it. You're not going to hold yourself accountable. So if you guys like Facebook, uh, I would say stick with that platform. If you don't like Instagram, then don't use it. If you don't like social media. All together, well, oh. <laughs> impossible. <laughs> impossible, exactly. Um, second thing is Mailchimp. So that's a email marketing software program. So I would highly encourage you, if you're thinking about writing a book, is to start an email list. Now it doesn't need to be again very fancy, but just start emailing your friends and your family and create a database of. People who are interested in your book, you know, people who need a network at the Rotary Club, right? And say, oh, we, they ask you about your book, and you say, oh, do you mind if I put you on my email, email list? And don't, oh, obviously, don't spam them, but you know, communicate with them maybe once a month, maybe every couple months, depending on what you guys feel like. And really, just say, hey, like, where, what status is the book at? What? What stage? Have you finished the first draft? Are you in rewrites, etc.? Uh, the third great tool, Amazon Ads. I won't get too much into this because it's very technical, but uh, Amazon has a program very much like Google where you can advertise your book on uh, Amazon, and it's very cheap and it's very effective. All right. So now you've done the marketing plan, you've figured out why you want to write this book, uh, you want to create an outline. And outline is very simple, you know, uh, you can use a piece of paper, I personally use Google Docs, but this, you know, introduction, um, you know, chapter one, chapter two, uh, and then the points for each chapter uh, in like subheadings. And this is, you can do this on a piece of paper, honestly it doesn't matter, it's more to organize your thoughts, right? And to figure out um, what you want to say and when you want to say it. All right, so you've done the, the fun part, you've done the easy part, now comes the hard part of actually writing the book. Uh, so this is primarily just <laughs> book out, get some time. I, part, I generally like to do writing first thing in the morning, Every day I get up, I go to the office an hour early and start writing. And so that's my alone time, that's my writing time. I aim for a thousand words. Sometimes I hit it, sometimes I don't. Um, but it's a really, for me personally, it's a good start to the day. And it allows me to focus. Uh, there's no distractions, first thing. Um, but, you know, there's some people who like to write. Uh, kind of like at midnight or like in the afternoon, right? Whatever kind, of, whatever time you uh, you can carve out and that you can enjoy and the, you kind of peak creative time, right? My, my wife, for example, she, her peak creative time is like 2 a.m. in the morning. So she will, yeah, she will stay up all night, 
she'll do her writing, yeah, 2, 2 a.m. in the morning. She'll go to bed at like 4 or 5 and then sleep in. That's, like, that's her routine, right? So whatever works for you, do that. All right, another thing you can do is hire a ghostwriter. So I actually have ghostwriting <coughs> services. Um, so if you don't actually, if you have a great idea that you want to communicate, but you don't actually want to do all the hard work of actually sitting down and typing out the words, then I do have a ghostwriting service where we can do all the heavy lifting for you and you can just kind of formulate the, the book, you can formulate the idea behind it. Okay, so how and yeah, so how can a ghostwriter help? They can save you time. So if you know there's a lot of busy people out there, a lot of entrepreneurs <coughs> who have other things that they're doing, uh, they have other things they want to accomplish. This will help them save them time. Um, some people have just a hard time focusing and actually doing the writing. You know, they they their brain actually does not work in a linear way where they can sit down and concentrate. Um, so this will help them focus the ideas and focus the actual content. Um, and so yeah, it can also build brand awareness for you. I would highly recommend that no matter what you, you're doing in life, you want to build a brand for yourself. And this again, this is my marketing background kind of kicking in, but I would say no matter who you are and what you're doing in life and what you're set out to accomplish, you want to create a brand for yourself. And you know, writing a book, hiring a ghostwriter, that can all help out. So after you've written the book, you've got a good shiny first draft, you're all happy with yourself, you're like, yay, I've written a book. Okay, what's next? So there's great, you know, modern technology is great because there's some amazing tools that can help you, can cut down on the editing time. One of them is Grammarly. This is an online tool that um, people use. It will help with your grammar, it can help with your spelling, and it will, you know, it will like catch mistakes just like that. So it's, it's really great. I would highly recommend There's other tools like it out there, but this is by far the best. So, um, so you know, if you're looking at writing a book, look at this tool, it's a great resource. All right, step six. So no matter how good of a writer you are, you always want to hire a professional, professional editor to look over because you know you always have your blind spots. You always you always miss those key mistakes that you you know you read over and over again, and you yet and yet you keep missing them, right? So you always always want to hire a professional editor. Uh, they will see things that you can't, they'll give you a different perspective, and they will be able to improve your manuscript greatly. All right, step seven. So you've got all the feedback, you've got what you can improve. Uh, step seven is just rewrite and repeat. Sometimes this will be subtle steps, and it's just uh, going back and back and back, and you know, you will send it to your editor again, and then they'll you know send it for more improvements, and then you have to rewrite it. So this step can actually take you know several months, even years, um, depending on kind of like what feedback you get from the editor. Um, what else can I say about this? Um, so yeah, so primarily when you know your your book is done, it's when you've when you've gotten basically no notes from your editor. And you think, okay, this is the best book I can possibly do. Sometimes it's a bit of a gut feeling and saying, okay, like this is polished. Sometimes it's, you know, when you send it out to some readers and they say, yes, this is amazing, I have no notes. So that's a great feeling. All right, so step eight, publish on Amazon. So Amazon, again, modern technology, great tool. Um, so you want to, so you want to publish on. Um, there's basically two avenues to publish on Amazon. The first is a like a, a hard copy book where you get printed, it gets sent to somebody, they can physically read it. The second is Kindle, 
which is becoming more and more popular these days. That is an ebook where you just open up an e-reader and people can just download your book directly. Uh, more and more authors these days are getting uh, more of their revenue from e-books rather than hard copies. So more people are reading uh, e-books rather than actual uh, real life books. So why, why self-publish? Why not take it to a traditional uh, editor or uh, literary agent in New York? Um, this is a great debate, and you know people have different opinions on it. Obviously, I think um, for me personally, I think self-publishing is the way of the future uh, because you have more control over your content. You don't have to, um, you know, I, uh, a literary agent is going to say make it more marketable, make it more action-oriented, put more sex scenes in it, or whatever, right? They want to sell more copies, right? And th that may not necessarily be your your why, right? Remember when we back to the beginning when we asked you why, we were like, we we're saying, okay, why do you want to write your book? And it's not to become a best-selling author. I would say uh, Amazon is a great tool. It's also Amazon is quicker, easier. Uh, so a lot of these literary agents, a lot of these big the big five uh, New York houses. They take about a year to review your book, another review, another year to, to print it. Um, so if you just want to just upload your manuscript and you want to print it, Amazon can do it in like a matter of this, right? So it's a great way to just quickly upload your book, uh, print it, and send it out, and you're done. Um, also, so with Amazon, you tend to make more money because you have more royalties. There is not so many steps, and so there's not more people to pay out, right? So you generally get 70% of your revenue through Amazon, where traditional publishers, you only get about 5%, right? Because you have to pay the literary agent, you have to pay the publisher, you have to pay chapters, you have to pay Barnes & Nobles, right? So this way, this is a direct-to-consumer way of selling your book, and hence you get more of the royalties. Uh, you can choose how much uh, how much you want to sell your book for, right? This is like this is how I did four ninety nine. I can do promotions on uh, my book, right? I can say you know Christmas deal, uh, my book is ninety nine cents or five dollars or whatever, right? You don't have that control with traditional publishers. They you have to go through a long process, um, so you have control over the market. You have control over price, and then, yeah, you just order as much mini books as you like, and so once you've done that, um, you can just press hit send, and, and the book gets uh, sent to uh, whoever, to your audience, to your, you know, you can sell it directly, and then you become an author, and that's great. And so that's my presentation, that is it.